What if I told you that you can bring your A1C down to 5% isn't just possible, but achievable for most people with diabetes, even if you have been struggling for years. I'm going to show you the exact medical strategies that work backed by real science, not just some internet myths. I have helped thousands of patients achieve A1C levels below 5.5%, and many have reached that golden 5% target. Today, I'm going to give you the complete roadmap. No fluff, no false promises, just proven medical strategies that work. By the end of this video, you will have a clear step-by-step -step plan that addresses the root causes of high blood sugar, not just the symptoms. And I will show you why most people fail and how to avoid those common mistakes. Let me start with the most important truth. Your A1C reflects your average blood sugar over two to three months. To get to 5%, you need an average glucose of 97 milligram per deciliter. That's not just good control, that is optimal metabolic health. And here's what works immediately. You need three, two, one rule for instant results. Now, what is that three, two, one rule? Three hours, no food, three hours before bed, two meals, limit yourself to two meals per day maximum, and one priority. Focus on one macronutrient change at a time. The simple framework can drop your A1C by 0.5 to 1% in just 8 to 12 weeks, it keeps dropping, and that's just the beginning. Let me be clear about something most doctors won't tell you. Type 2 diabetes is fundamentally, yeah, a dietary disease, an environmental disease, a toxic disease, an inflammation disease. Your body has too much glucose and it is overflowing into your bloodstream like water spilling from an overfilled barrel. The solution is not more medication to force that glucose into already full cells. The solution is to stop overfilling the barrel in the first place. And here's a key insight for you. There are no essential carbohydrates, none. Your body needs essential amino acids from protein and essential fatty acids from fats, but there is no such thing as essential carbohydrate. Every carbohydrate you eat becomes glucose in your bloodstream. Now, I'm going to give you the first strategy. First of all, master your macronutrients, okay? Glucose, protein, fat. So, when you eat 50 grams of, let's say, pure glucose, your blood sugar spike 150 to 200 milligrams, 50 grams of the glucose. If you eat 50 grams of white bread or white rice, your blood sugar will spike 120 to 180 milligrams per deciliter from its baseline. If you eat protein like chicken or fish, your blood sugar will rise 0 to 15. So, 0 probably probably for fish, 15 for chicken. Now, healthy fats like avocado oil or olive oil, your blood sugar will rise between zero and five milligram per deciliter. As you can see, this is not an option. This is measurable physiology. If your blood sugars are high, you need to eat more foods that don't raise your blood sugar. Now, the 5% A1C plate method for you. You're gonna have 50% non-starchy vegetables like broccoli, spinach, asparagus, cauliflower, 30% high-quality protein like wild-caught fish, grass-fed meat, pastured eggs, 20% healthy fats like avocados, olive oil, nuts, and seeds. Now, eliminate these glucose bombs completely. And they are all added sugars and sweetened drinks, white carbohydrates, bread, rice, pasta, potatoes, processed foods and snacks, fruit juices and most fruits except small amounts of berries and sometimes apples. And the second strategy will be your meal timing and sequencing. Because there is a power to the food order, and research shows eating foods in the right sequence can reduce the post-meal glucose spikes by 30 to 40 percent. Now, what do you do? Vegetables first with olive oil and vinegar. Protein and fats are going to come second. And any carbohydrate will come last. And that's if you must have them, okay? It's better not to have them at all. And here's a vinegar hack for you. Take just one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in water before meals. The acetic acid slows glucose absorption, can reduce the post-meal spikes by up to 34%. This isn't just folk medicine, it is proven science. And we will use intermittent fasting for your A1C control. We're gonna start with 16 to eight, like 16 hours of fasting, eight hours of eating window. If you're not used to fasting at all, maybe start with 12 hours of fasting for a couple weeks. And then we're gonna eventually progress to 
18 to 6 instead of 16 to 8 and even sometimes just one meal a day that's it if you can do that and it's doable and this gives your pancreas time to rest and your cells become more insulin sensitive again strategy number three is exercise that actually works especially for older people it is hard to do it because of all the joint problems and aches and pains but not all exercise is created equal for blood sugar control the age does not have to be a barrier i'm gonna give you a couple tips for resistance training for seniors i will say 60 plus this is your secret weapon for a1c control muscle is your body's largest glucose storage tank and here's how it works go for chair-based resistance it's perfect for beginners you can do seated leg extensions right at that heart 10 to 15 reps you can do chair push-ups 5 to 10 repetitions you can do seated arm circles with some light weights 18 to 20 reps and you're gonna do this only three times per week 15 to 20 minutes each that's it now for intermediate level exercise i'm gonna make some standing resistance you're gonna do for example wall push-ups very easy 10 to 15 reps body weight squats use chair for support you can do 8 to 12 reps standing calf rises 15 to 20 reps and you can do like light dumbbell curls and do like 10 to 15 of those as well the magic number is just 20 minutes of resistance training can lower blood sugar for up to 24 hours your muscles become glucose sponges pulling sugar from your bloodstream now how about some low impact cardio that works like water walking for people who have access to pools excellent for joints and burns glucose efficiently recumbent bike 20 to 30 minutes at moderate pace elliptical it's a low impact right it's, it's full body engagement which is great and swimming for those swimmers right or people who like water perfect for a full body and super joint friendly as well just make sure that you wash out that chlorine of your body which can be a problem the post meal wall protocol and that's pretty much non-negotiable for a1c control 15 to 20 minute walk after each meal make sure you eat before sunset so you have time to go out even slow walking like two to three miles per hour still works you can use a walker or a cane if you need to because movement is movement doesn't matter how you do it and this can prevent glucose spikes by 30 to 50 percent now i do high intensity interval training but for seniors, we're gonna modify that. Don't get anxious. So we're gonna do one minute of faster walking and we're gonna go down to two minutes of normal pace. And we're gonna do that five to eight times. And total time you're gonna spend is gonna be 15 to 20 minutes. So just change the speed and intensity and then come back to your baseline. Now, number four strategy, and that is strategic supplementation. There are four core supplements for A1C reduction. Number one is berberine. It acts like natural metformin, does not have the side effects of metformin as much, and can lower A1C by 0.5 to 1%. Magnesium is another one, especially magnesium glycinate. Nearly every diabetic is deficient in magnesium, and magnesium is essential for insulin function. And alpha lipoic acid, 300 to 600 milligram daily. It really improves insulin sensitivity and protects against diabetic complications. And B1 vitamin, thiamine right 100 to 300 milligram especially benfotiamine which is fat soluble form prevents glucose from being stored as fat and reduces the anxiety after eating carbs and reduces the risk of complications due to diabetes and high blood sugar you need also 4700 milligram of potassium daily for optimal glucose storage in your muscles your liver most people get less than half of this amount in the u.s so focus on avocados spinach and salmon now finally, we're gonna focus on functional medicine approach because traditional medicine treats symptoms and functional medicine addresses root causes. And here's what matters for A1C control. Did you know that there is a connection between your gut and your glucose, not just uh, what you eat, because 70 to 80% of your immune system is in your gut. Poor gut health means chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation means insulin resistance. And insulin resistance, leads to diabetes or worsening of diabetes. For example, a good thing for your gut is fermented food like sauerkraut, kimchi, kefir. Consider high quality probiotics if you cannot do that. 50 billion CFUs daily, at least 100 billion is even better. Now macronutrient testing, I would say most diabetics are deficient in, such as vitamin D, I would say try to keep your vitamin D levels at 50 to 80. Go for omega-3 fatty acids, especially after checking your omega-3 index. You can do chromium. Again, a lot of people are deficient in, in that and it improves your insulin sensitivity. And zinc, don't forget about zinc because zinc is essential 
for insulin production. Now, the inflammation is what drives insulin resistance, right? We can address that with some supplements like curcumin, 500 to 1000 milligram daily. We talk about omega-3s, 2 to 3 grams daily. Green tea extract, very important. And don't forget about the inflammatory foods. If you don't eliminate inflammatory foods like processed foods and vegetable oils, you're looking for trouble. Now, when you see an endocrinologist for diabetes, you're lucky because it can also address other hormonal imbalances, such as thyroid function, such as cortisol uh, imbalance. These will worsen insulin resistance and glucose metabolism. Growth hormone deficiency accelerates aging and glucose problems. So, Sometimes functional medicine doctors will order testing that insurance does not cover, but I think it's your health and I think you should go for it to get better understanding of your health. And the next strategy, stress and sleep optimization. It's not just about the food or exercise because there is a huge connection between cortisol and glucose. Chronic stress keeps your cortisol levels elevated, which raises your blood sugar even when you're not eating. This is why some people wake up with high glucose despite fasting all night. Their blood sugar keeps going up, right? Especially when they don't eat breakfast. So cortisol goes up. Now we're gonna have some sleep quality check as well. Seven to nine hours of quality sleep is important. You're gonna set your room temperature to 68 degrees or below whatever you like, but it needs to be cool. It has to be completely dark. And you're not gonna have no screen hours, two hours before bedtime. No watching TV, no watching news. And consider some magnesium glycinate between 200 to 400 milligram before bedtime that can help you sleep better. Now here's some advanced strategies for you. Continuous glucose monitoring. Even if you're not on an insulin, a CGM, a continuous glucose monitoring, provides real-time feedback. You'll discover your personal glucose triggers and see immediate results from dietary changes. And for those people who have dawn phenomenon, like if you're waking up with high blood sugar, I'll give you a trick. Eat a small protein snack before bed, or if that's making you gain weight, you can eat immediately after you wake up. Try apple cider vinegar before your last meal the day before, and consider time-restricted eating with an earlier eating window. Now, some people do ketone supplementation if you're not on a ketogenic diet because exogenous the ketones from outside provide an alternative fuel for your brain and reduce the glucose demand and help achieve your A1C goal levels. But let me be honest, achieving a 5% A1C requires commitment. You're essentially reversing years of metabolic damage but here is what patients experience. Week one to two, you're gonna have reduced cravings and better energy. In the first month, you're gonna have noticeable weight loss and you're gonna sleep better. In month two to three, you're gonna have significant A1C drop, more than likely close to 2%. And by month six and on, your A1C is gonna be in the five to 6% range with sustained energy. And as you go along, you can bring that A1C below 5%. If you wanna make a plan like week to week, here's what I would recommend. Week number one, eliminate all added sugars and sweetened drinks, right? Week two, add the vinegar protocol and post meal walks. Week three, implement 16 to eight intermittent fasting. Week four, add some resistance training three times per week. Start with chair exercises. And second month, consider supplementation and some functional medicine testing. Remember, this isn't just about perfection, right? It is about consistency. It is about planning. One bad meal will not ruin your progress, but one good meal won't save you either. So it's consistency. For detailed meal plans, for different supplement recommendations, I would say also visit sugarmds.com. We have a lot of protocols, books, and supplements, you name it, and sign up to the newsletter to get tricks that most people don't have access to. Now your 5% A1C isn't just a number, it is your ticket to optimal health. Sustained energy, freedom from diabetic complications, freedom from diabetic medications, and the science is clear. The methods work. Thousands of my patients are the living proof. The question is not whether you can achieve a 5% A1C. The question is, are you ready to commit to the strategies that make it inevitable? See you later.